Good morning or afternoon as the case may be wherever you are or at night. This is Michael Vanderpool. I'm in the country of Georgia, capital city, the international city, Tbilisi. Some of the things I'll talk about, depending on if I get a good chance to finish, if everything works correctly here. So I've been testing this Facebook Live video stream the last few days. So far, so good. But I have noticed that I haven't been able to see some of the questions during the broadcast. And one of the things I wanted to talk about is my cover image on Facebook here, which is the United National Movement Party, or UNM. They have a brochure on uh, what it looks to be a proposal of an estated uh, by the poster of the person that shared that brochure their idea of a 400 gel or lari that's Georgian currency a month pension which is what I made a kind of uh, silent protest or open protest about back in um, I think it was September or October so and that is I, I had said that there, there, well, let me go back. There was a, an article during the Noble Partner 2017 multinational exercises here, and uh, the news article had said that during that time, uh, Russian President Putin came over to, in Georgia, occupied Abkhazia, and according to a paragraph above the article, from netgazeti.ge, uh, Putin had signed offering, I think it was 400 gel a month pension for the Abkhazians and uh, free medical insurance at any Russian medical clinic or hospital there or in Moscow or uh, Russia. I'm not 100% sure, but maybe that paragraph above that article from netgazeti.ge disappeared. But that's where I learned that detailed little piece of information. So also from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here in Georgia, it was announced during the Noble Partner 2017 multinational military exercises out here at the Georgian Vaziani military base with the U.S. Army Europe present. Um, in fact, I rode out with couple of those guys, Tony Sweeney and uh, was, uh, Captain Jason, or Colonel Jason, I don't know which rank he had, but anyway, I rode out one day with those guys. It was about a 30 or 45 minute ride. But uh, anyway, during those huge military exercises, it was announced by the Georgian Ministry of Foreign Affairs that two more villages in the uh, Zugdidi region or next to Abkhazia were taken under the uh, Russian backed forces military occupation wire. So that news was up on the Ministry of Foreign Affairs website in Georgia. Then later I couldn't find that. I don't know if it's still there or not. So this is uh, how I come to conclude that what we had talked about before, I had met with a girl that said she was an election monitor during the uh, autumn of 2016 here when the parliamentary elections were taking place. And she had said that the elections were bought and stolen. And she explained the different methods and techniques that this uh, Georgian Dream political party and current government here had done this process. I had been at U.S. Senator Blunt's office in Columbia uh, that April prior and told them, told Jordan, his staffer, that it was my opinion that that was Russia's next step into Georgia was through Parliament. Because in chat, their so-called security guy, Arthur Zukorov, also a Freemason, was chatting with me 
in a way he was trying to like elicit an idea or an interest or get some kind of comment maybe from me on how they would come into Georgia. And I, I told Senator Blunt's office it was going to be through Parliament. So then after that election, they officially deemed it a valid election. But yet the same friend that said that she was an election monitor on that election was telling me how they had to be careful because when the police during that time would pull people that were associated with families or maybe even sons or daughters of the political opposition, especially United National Movement, the police would put drugs in their car. And so they had to film, like I'm filming now. They had to film the police and hold on to that because they were allegedly, from what I'm told, planting drugs on political opposition here and then arresting them and putting them in jail or prison. So um, what's happening with that is, is uh, the same person told me, and I confirmed it with others, the elderly here, mainly, especially in the regions, the uh, senior citizens of Georgia were dying of famine, inadequate pension, and either no or inadequate medical insurance. So that's that's part of uh, today why I made this cover image, the image that I made it, because based on this information, I had kind of made a, an act of protest to draw attention to it back in uh, August or September, I think it was September or October. And I talked about going to Abkhazia, meeting the president, getting photos, becoming a citizen of Abkhazia, and saying, you know, fuck Georgia. That's what I was going to do. So after that, uh, some people were paying attention because I said it's an issue of national security and defense that it is imperative that the elderly population here have a pension and medical insurance that's adequate enough because they're coming from the Soviet time and they're seeing Russian President Vladimir Putin's offer and the opposition, other pro-Kremlin opposition party here mm -hmm. offer of a pension, 400 gel a month or something like that, 200 US dollars approximately a month pension for the elderly. A lot of times these elderly are the owner of the flat or the family house that the younger generations are staying and living in. So that means they have a lot of influence over them economically and uh, psychologically. So what happens is, is I uh, make that point by just telling all friends that, hey, I'm just gonna go to Abkhazia because what a deal, man. They're gonna get this kind of uh, pension offer, get this medical insurance, what a deal. And of course, I think that's not even possible in a legal sense. There's some issues with the law of the occupied territories and law of return and things like this. So I didn't go, but I sure as hell made my point. And because they asked me to work on a defense, American Georgian defense related project. And that was in the interest of the defense and national security of Georgia. So I wrote a letter after I said that I was going inactive in a previous letter in October. I wrote another letter after spending some couple of weeks in the United States of America in December. I think it's dated December 15, 2017. And I brought this issue up and sent this letter, signature certified return receipt or insured you know, receipt to U.S. Congresswoman, Missouri Republican, Vicki Hartzler, U.S. Congress, uh, U.S. Congressman and Armed Services Committee member, Steve Russell, who's a former U.S. Army, uh, I think, airborne 
I don't know if he's a ranger or what special operations he was involved with, but he, I think he fought in Iraq. He's out of Oklahoma, but now he's on the U.S. Armed Services Committee. And he visited here in that, I believe it was, I don't know if it was October or November, on that election period, just before they had the election, and the Georgian Dream Party shunned him. They refused to meet him. Now keep in mind, I have a previous video where I explain that it is said in some American media that Bidzina Ivanishvili, the so-called godfather of this current government and one of the world's listed Forbes billionaires, and according to DF Watch, they use the word godfather, which has the connotation as a mafia figure, uh, that he had lobbied Clinton before the election. So they banked and betted and literally invested on Clinton winning here. But, of course, that didn't happen. And I myself, being a bit gifted from time to time with predictions, wrote on Facebook in October or September, it was the first time, 2016, that I can't fucking wait until the 115th U.S. Congress comes to power. So, I also wrote U.S. Senator Roy Blunt, Republican Missouri, who is on the defense appropriations. I think only one of three senators, or previously was only one of three senators, on that assignment, also part of the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee. I was made keenly aware of that when I went to Blunt's office on April 15, 2016. And I was also told that sometimes because of that position on the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee, they're hearing things about our enemies that keep them awake at night. So regarding Georgia, I gave him a list of suggestions. He wrote those down very carefully. Six days later, U.S. Republican congressman had a speech on the House floor and calls to the U.S. State Department and then U.S. President Obama. Steve Russell gave a list of requests from the State Department, from the President, from also Western journalists. He said, we call upon Western journalists to report on what could be last days of Georgians' freedom as a free people. So you can consider that a congressional mandate about Western journalists reporting here. That's clearly seen in a video on YouTube. If you can't understand English speaking very well, you can read about that on DFS Watch. So, I wrote a letter to those three, and then a fourth, which is Clara McCaskill, Democrat out of, uh, well, her office. She's a Democrat senator in Missouri. Her office also I have visited several times in Columbia over the past several years on the U.S.-Georgian partnership and friendship. First time I visited her office, I took my friend's daughter's photo there and told them how she drove under Russian jets bombing for four hours, three or four hours, driving back from Borjomi past Gori to Tbilisi. And there were bombs being dropped on the left and the right indiscriminately all over Georgia. And I passed her photo over that table and I told the story. When I came back over here, after that January 7, 2014, we had some NATO event, which is uh, one of the more popular films now, with US, not US, but NATO, uh, with Georgian special forces are on the range, and all the journalists and military folks present were offered to learn how to shoot or practice pistol target practice that day on the range. Now that video is up on YouTube. And that is one of seven military bases that I filmed on since September 9, 2013. And I filmed on uh, three, at least, in the last year. That's Baziani Air Base, that photographed and filmed 
not only Georgian high officials in government, the highest officials, but also uh, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence and his wife, and also not only on Vaziani Air Base that I've filmed, but also on Vaziani Military Base, the Noble Partner, 2017 exercise, and then on uh, Whiteman's Air Force Base in Missouri. An awesome U.S. Air Force Air Show wings over Whiteman. And that was uh, primarily my own interest, but it was also a secondary interest of supporting the project by getting some awesome epic photos of the Warthog made by Alexander Cardvelli, designed by Alexander Cardvelli, Georgian immigrant to America who was born and raised in the very city that I'm walking down the street in right now. That's Tbilisi, the country of Georgia. So, what uh, everybody's taking photos of their children and beautiful dessert cake. I don't know what the name of that place is, but you can see it. Yeah. Anyway, everybody's taking Instagram, Facebook photos, I can tell. So it's a nice place to visit. So, I've also made films in Russia, by the way. You can see them on YouTube in uh, South Russia. We're in uh, South Caucasus now. I was in the North Caucasus a little bit. In fact, I saw this really unique view of a mountain there. It looked kind of flat on top, but uh, Krasnodar Krai, region of Russia. So back to Alexander Clark Valley. So what about that show? I've never seen Leila Cardvelli uh, since then, actually before that, because I had turned down an invitation to come to a ministry foreign affairs event here with the Georgian Patriarch and Foreign Minister called for unity among the people. As I explained, that's a bit of a problem when your Georgian friends are like, how can you do that when they're planting drugs on political opposition and arresting people on fake charges? At the same time, I had a problem with Layla because NATO PA event was the same weekend. So actually on Friday, Anna Avarsky, a very close friend of Mihail Saakashvili, and a member of the United National Movement. Uh, she said, hey, Mike, you want to go to this NATO PA event? I'm like, hey, I'm down for that. I'm supporting NATO and have been for some years. Obviously, that's that 2014 story, right? Literally out on the firing range. That's with NATO event and Georgian Special Forces. That's a very, very cool event. In fact, I saw the red-haired woman in a blue coat. I saw her last month over at the NATO office headquarters here. And uh, she and another uh, NATO uh, guy were out there on the range, walking down the range. I got an awesome photo of them walking out uh, from the Special Forces range that day. And in fact, got the invitation by a super soldier girl that I had several times predicted her future uh, using Meiji astrology, something I do very frequently with all kinds of people predict their future. Anyway, um, back to Card Valley and the American Georgian Defense Related Project. So they asked me, Katuna Palauri said she's a lawyer advocate with the Georgia Ministry of Defense. Then you've got Leila Card Valley, who is the president of the International Society of Alexander Card Valley. And I gotta stop for a second and say that I wrote the embassy yesterday on two issues. One about that I'm uh, frustrated that Leila Cardvelli has never answered these letters that I mentioned. Uh, and the letter, uh, I think I did mention that the letter in mid-December asked and addressed the issue of pensions here being an issue of national security and defense. And I explained why earlier. And the reason I'm bringing this topic up is because today is the first day I've seen the United National Movement brochure proposing that if they get elected and into position, they will take care of that 400 gel a month pension. And uh, so, because it's very inadequate here, in my opinion right now, and many others. Uh, when you've got elderly dying in the regions, as they were reporting to me, 
then that's problematic. So from famine and lack of medical, adequate medical. So what uh, my letter was saying that I've become active again with ISAC mid-December and uh, the response to that was from U.S. Senator Roy Blunt about exactly 45 days later on February 1st. They don't have to answer, but he chose to answer, obviously, and but they give themselves, they've got a, an average 45-day response time, especially if it's something that involves research or if you ask for, for example, I've asked for investigations on U.S. Embassy before, uh, especially in uh, Ukraine. And they've got about a 45-day window to respond if, if they're going to choose to respond to their constituents, to the people they represent, the American people. So I'm very thankful to Roy Blunt and his staff for that. Thank you much. Uh, I've been visiting there off and on for about three or four years on the Georgian-American partnership. Now, I've got dozens of films on that dozens of films on the Alexander Carvelli topic events in Georgia on Alexander Carvelli. So suddenly, Layla Carvelli just stopped speaking. That's it. That was in October. No response, no answer to the letter. Then I request that they remove this U.S. Ambassador Kelly because of lack of leadership and all this. It's posted up on YouTube. I might have set it to private, but there's another copy of that letter I wrote to federal agency and also the White House about that, making that request that he be removed from Georgia. Three weeks later, he gave a farewell the day after he set up, announced he set up a strategic communication program or helped the Georgian government do that. So then on March 1st, they have a card belly event at the Parliament Library, and I'm not invited, didn't have any notice or anything like that. For those that have seen my previous videos, you'll know that that was also one thing that irritated me about the Cart Valley Association events, a separate association uh, back in the end of September was the U.S. Embassy sponsored event. I had no notice of the initial event from any of those people. But that topic, as I mentioned in previous video, was exact to the business proposal that I had here from Dr. Tamar at Lancet Medical Center where the Stanford educated uh, uh, Georgian who was there, uh, who's currently living in California, set up a lab here for genetics testing and that's NASA science that was doing this testing. Uh, that was being used in the tests. So the film from that would have been content from that event but so in other words these people they don't even do what they're funded to do they're not serious you know so they ask me to help so I go to these events make these films do this stuff then uh, you could call it lobbying or you could just call it friendly visit on the partnership the friendship to the senators all that takes time money and a lot of strategy and effort and that's something I've done for four and a half years now and for the Georgians to not or the Americans here I don't know how to talk about the US Embassy to not notify or to be serious about the projects which they asked for because you know I went down and filmed at the occupation border first American in history to do that had a military sniper targeted me on approach to that occupation border and that Russian creeping military occupation border at the time and that video is up on YouTube so for me to go down risk my life and to do that at my own initiative my idea and for these incompetent fuckers here on both the Georgian and American side to not notify me of the shit that they asked me to they tasked me to do so, for example, Katuna Polari, Leila Cardvelli, asked me to help popularize not only um, Alexander Cardvelli, but prominent or talented Georgians in society. Thus, the name Alexander, uh, the, the International Society of Alexander Cardvelli. Society is part of that. It's just not only about uh, Alexander. Running. 
across the street now. Uh, it's also about society. And a lot of the people that would show up at these events, on certain events, were given uh, membership or honorary membership, certificate of honorary membership as part of that. So what their task, and it's volunteer on my part, initially they told me they'd give me a salary and we'd have offices and all this stuff, but what they had tasked me to do was also this help to popularize uh, you know, prominent or talented Georgians in society. So I've got a YouTube channel. YouTube Analytics says I'm reaching at least 121 countries. That was some time ago, but we don't trust analytics anyway because there's flaws and errors. And quite frankly, with the Fox News, Sean Hannity reported shadow blocking, shadow banning on the US side, Facebook's current U.S. federal investigation and also uh, investors' lawsuits against them now just pouring in uh, because of their unethical handling of Facebook users and their, their data, their privacy. Uh, with the issues of shadow banning and shadow blocking, um, what I had asked a year ago in fact, it was more than a year ago. It was right after the U.S. presidential election. And around that time, I asked then that they should have a U.S. Senate investigation uh, on Facebook. But also it's uh, happening, according to George Utenichvili, the former uh, rocket scientist with the Ministry of Defense in Georgia, there's an event where I filmed two events with, with him, at least, that I filmed that are up on YouTube. One is with IBSU. International Black Sea University. The other is with um, his wedding. And so he developed a grad rocket system so that he can just launch, you know, multiple rockets, you know, those grad systems. And also he was told me he was working on a radar system, a, a passive radar system, which would be a game changer if, if this was... Uh, something true that he's telling me about that but what he also told me was one day he said call me on Facebook because I was posting photos of the warthog and Facebook was marking it as spam but I thought it was George that's marketing it as spam and I got pissed off and cussed him out on Facebook he says call me so I called him he says look that's not me he goes that's Facebook Facebook said it was George true story so what was happening is is again, they had a Card Valley event. They didn't invite me. And the photo that they were blocking was me with the Warthog. So this is a game that either the American government has instructed the Georgians to play and or that the Georgian government has played. So that's why on Facebook you will see, like, there was an event where Layla Card Valley was there. She invited me. It was at TSU. Uh, I think it was on immigration topic or something like this, Americans, uh, America, and the Georgians in America. So what happens is, is they have uh, these photos, you know, and I'm not in the photos. They make sure that I'm blocked out, you know, the angle, the cut, everything. So that has been a trend that started from day one, where when I got the honorary certificate into the International Society of Alexander Cart Valley, uh, it was at the National Library of Sciences here in Georgia, the biggest archive of historical records in Soviet times was stored right there. So it was very significant, uh, symbolically. And it was on March 20 or 21st, 2014, and there was about 30 of us there, professors. And Richard Norland, former U.S. ambassador to Georgia, then he was the U.S. ambassador to Georgia. You can type in Richard Norland on YouTube and find his video about uh, his talk at Geneva on innovation and leadership and the need for further education and how important innovation is and education and he's at I think Switzerland in Geneva and it says uh, political advisor to the US Joint Chiefs of Staff which as we know is the highest representatives in the US military and the armed services who directly advise the President of the United States 
of America. That's who that is now. So when I post photos sarcastically with his face with a white circle or Layla Cardbelli with a white circle over the face, it's because they've played this game. I'm not there. I've never seen a photo of me with an ambassador, U.S. ambassador. So I don't know if it's something that the Georgians just did. Or we could, sure, we could say, oh, it's just a coincidence. But I'm a photographer. I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm a journalist. I've interviewed the director of uh, Scientific Technical Center, Delta, which makes uh, some incredible weapons, uh, military weapons. So, you know, you would think that they have uh... actually when I was to meet Richard Norlin on one event uh, we thought maybe I was poisoned because I was so sick I could barely move in fact I was the worst I'd ever been and it was three days I in fact I was gonna go to Russia and I couldn't go to Russia because I had been so sick so I, there was a what it was it was a signing of a memorandum between the U.S. ambassador and Georgia on the uh, on the project on the International Society of Alexander Carvel, and I got so sick there was no way in hell I could make it. In fact, I could barely I couldn't even be on the internet. And that's a rare thing for me to get that ill, and it it would appear to be you know it felt like some kind of food poisoning because it was such a violent uh, vomiting and such a such a powerful sickness because not much will keep me down very long so um, my entire family's like that I think my brothers maybe never missed work in 25 years and I'm not exaggerating I, I think I don't know if there's I don't know if there's been a day or not I'm not kidding that's just how my family is they don't when it comes to that they don't uh, they're Missouri people they don't stay down and they don't uh, let it keep them down. But I couldn't sign. So that was the last time I would have saw Richard Norland. So, you know, you have to think, if you think like these Eurasians think, they're a wicked, evil way of thinking. It's like a Russian KGB. They have a diabolical way of thinking. And this is another reason why I'm studying the black magic, researching it, because I've studied and practice white magic per se or gray but the, we have to study their mind because um, these people you know, unless it's the American CIA which is just as diabolic so it's all the same shit but you have to get in their head because you have to think okay why did they do this is this how can it be a coincidence over let's say three and a half years at least where they do this project they do this program and they, they have done subtle, sneaky shit to where they could just knock you off and erase you from history. Like, like if these guys are working with Russia and tanks come in here tomorrow and, hey, they raised the Russian flag, right? This is now Geo-Russia. So we're in Geo-Russia. Let's pretend. I'm in Geo-Russia. Probably Russians, I don't know what's happening in Crimea. Russian Crimea now. But uh, probably they would not want my photo hanging out in the goddamn yearbook of the university or the fucking website of the former governments or whatever. So they probably just said, well, let's just keep his... Or maybe it's a message where... I mean, what, what message am I supposed to get from that when just coincidentally in so many of these more official institution events, you know, like university, U.S. Embassy there, and stuff again, where if... Uh, if I'm not in these photos, or I've been, you know, cut out or whatever, uh, then uh, the message could be, we'll just cut you out. You know, it's like a Cardvelli story. I joke, but the Cardvelli story is, is that he had basically disappeared. That he had such a brain, he was such a genius, and was of such an importance to the military, such an importance to defense, national security, <laughs> they just disappeared him to Rhode Island. And he left and, and uh, had a quiet, he had to give up his family. He couldn't communicate with his family anymore behind this iron curtain, which I think is 
Maybe it's here again. I don't know. I got a friend that I said, this is Russia. This is not Georgia. This is Russia. I said, what do you think? She said, well, I don't know. I think, I, yeah, yeah, I think maybe you're right. This is, I thought too that this is really Russia. They don't have tanks here, uh, not in Belize anyway. There's 22 miles from here maybe. Certainly the Russian military base I think is like 22 miles from here on Georgian land against international law, against international norms. So here I am and my friend is Georgian and she's saying this is Russia. They don't have to have their tanks here for this to be Russia. So then I joke on Facebook, a lot of stuff that I say is sarcastic and I have a disclaimer on my Facebook about that. But they say, yeah, please America, send us more money. Please send us more money because it's just like Anatoly Galitsyn wrote. What they're gonna do is have a long range deception over 40 or 50 years. They're gonna use American money. Americans will be so happy. Former Soviet republics are wanting democracy and freedom that stupid Americans will send their money and this is how they will rebuild the Soviet former republics, former Soviet republics, and this is how they will do the situation and then they will one day just turn on the, the West, that's it. So we have a situation now where I've got like 20 films on Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week, 20 documentary films. I've got photo sets. Some guy thanked me from another Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week out of New York. He m made notable mention on the Twitter, which I'm getting like 27 or 28,000 a month average Twitter impressions. So people are seeing that. And those are automatic tweets from Facebook. So if I put something on Facebook, it's automatically tweeted over to Twitter. So that's an additional set of internet impressions and viewership outside of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people on Facebook that are watching or reading or seeing my stuff. So what uh, this guy did is he's in New York. He's a photographer, professional. And he's on the Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week and he makes a notable mission. So I take a photo of that and load it up to uh, Facebook. I've been waiting now for almost four days. Here in just another couple hours, it'll be a full four days for an answer from Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week Tbilisi. I, I emailed three different people on the website of Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week Tbilisi about press accreditation. No answer. It is the second time was yesterday that I emailed. I had originally emailed on a Sunday on Monday. There's three different people there that I emailed. Three different contacts. There is no phone that I can find or that a friend at STC Delta, another photographer, and he last time complained about not getting a call, not getting notification. So it's like Radio Free Liberty Europe says the Georgian government retains a firm grip on media here. But yet, my people will send millions and millions and millions and millions, and I mean, I'm not exaggerating now, not being funny, millions of dollars of U.S. money to this tiny country of three million Georgians that are here. There's 700,000, they're not Georgian. And there's another two or so million Georgians that because of desperation of economy and to help their families or to have a better life, they're in other countries. Uh, they're generally the smarter ones. So um, here we have three million people and we're giving just a couple of days ago. Now this is already on top of the 100, I think it's around 156 million in the last three years that uh, outgoing US ambassador um, Ian Kelly, who's getting ready to go home and teach in Chicago three weeks after I, actually to be two months after I made the request, they remove him from this location by letter. What a coincidence, right? It's probably not a coincidence, who knows? But um, he said in three years of his time here, we funded these people with 
156 million dollars. And just the other day, Trump signs a defense spending bill, and I don't know if it's a hundred, more than a hundred million, or if it's less, because the translator here is the most difficult language, one of the ten most oldest languages in the world, and it's one of the most difficult languages in the world. So the, Google doesn't do a very good job in translating, but it's an incredible amount of money that once again is being given by a presidential decree on a defense spending bill to this country, helping with the occupied regions. Now keep in mind I'm the first American to go down and film in the occupied border. And I'm waiting, it's now the fourth day, no answer from Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week on press accreditation. So I'm wanting to book a ticket to go back and plan my trip to America. These events is on May 3 through 7. And I'm waiting, there's no answer. And I have the Georgian Ministry of Defense lawyer who took my advice, put the content to my advice on this matter of defense. She got her way into America because one of the things she said is, is Mike, I love Americans, I love America. How do I get to America? And I said, Katuna, you form nonprofit, a foundation or a charity, and you get an office in America, you form it there. And I said, they have to give you a visa. And I said, the second thing, Katuna, is that Georgia must be known on the international stage for help. It's not the only defense. This is where some people here are making a huge mistake. It took allied US and other allied warships in August 2008 coming through the Black Sea to Batumi to help end the five-day war. And that war wouldn't have been five days or in reality 12 days if the, and I have this on film, NATO Security Conference, October 2015, there is a guy, very loud but kind and professional, Turkish uh, port controller that citing some law or confusion about some law or circumstance would not allow the Allied ships to come through. Bush said, fuck you, we're coming, and finally pushed on through. So, uh, hey, what, you know, we don't have the best relations with Turkish government right now, unfortunately, although they've been very good to me, I have to say that. They, you know, I've traveled there several times, and I had a situation where somebody got involved in a human trafficking or abduction situation, and they were completely cool, professional, very good people. I've always had good, good impressions of uh, actual Turkish people. In fact, you see this haircut? You see, you see that? That's Turkish. So kudos to my Turkish friends, but with Turkish government, i got to say the same thing, though. I've, I've gotten along really well with Turkish government. I haven't had any problems with it, even when Yulia flipped out at the airport because she was arguing with the guys at the hotel over being overcharged on the laundry. And I tried to tell her, you can't act Ukrainian here. You've got to be on time. You've got to be accurate. You, we can't. We, nobody's waiting for us. Planes, trains, automobiles. Uh, TV shows, movies, everything is moving in the West. Everything is staying on time in the West, generally speaking. She didn't buy into that shit. She loved to fight and argue, so we're there. She's fighting and arguing with these guys. She's going to kick their ass. I'm like, Yuli, it's time to go. Come on, man. We got the taxi. It's, you know, you got time to fight with these Turkish fuck. So uh, we got to the airport. She's all sweaty, faces, you know, and she's, um, we missed our flight. We had to ditch two suitcases or pay an extra grand for extra baggage fees. And here we are at the Turkish airport. They got their automatic weapons. They're very serious people. When it comes to security in Turkey, don't fuck around. So we're there at the airport, and um, we miss our flight, and we have to come up with an extra grand on top of that. Maybe I think it's more like 1200 because we're flying through to Spain. We're staying over in Spain, and we're going to Panama. We had to stop in Costa Rica first, stay there for the plane to be, uh, I don't know, cleaned, and maybe some passengers changed flight there too, but generally it was more for the... So it was a long flight, man. We went from here to Turkey. We stayed a week in Istanbul. Then we went to Spain, spent the night in Spain. They wouldn't let her Ukrainian citizen come down from transport zone because she's a very unfree person and um, with that Ukrainian passport back then. So uh, she had to stay upstairs. I was able to, had to stay downstairs. We were married. True story. So we get on the flight and continue on to Costa Rica for a layover, then into Panama. We had the red carpet layout, we had the five different security guys, the lawyers from Mossack Fonseca, they had the earpieces, it was really cool. It was like a scene out of a movie. They're like walking through the airport after we get off the red carpet, walking to the airport like. 
You know what I mean? That was us. And we're going to the big law firm. It's getting 150 different international cities, or 120 at least, including the Sicilies over in the uh, Indian Ocean. And that's how it went down. So the situation is also that um, back over here a little bit out of the way there's people trying to walk through there and the situation is is that you have this ministry of defense my ex-wife that I was just talking about she went on and became US Army Airborne and this is after we separated then she went US Special Operations when we were in Kiev together when she was just my interpreter she was involved in the Orange Revolution every goddamn day and every moment of her free time she was on my Don you know what my Don is look that shit up Anyway, the soft color revolution back then is called the Orange Revolution. There wasn't really any violence. The only violence that took place was some undercover Ukrainian cops trying to start some shit and sabotage what's new with Ukrainian cops, right? Well, that was back 10, 12, 14. Yeah, that was 14 years ago, all right? So, anyway, true story. They, I, I saw Sovereign Man, whoever that guy is, he says he's a former military intelligence officer or intelligence guy or something. Anyway, he said it was some bloody revolution, but nah. There was no blood unless it was the day those guys, these undercover cops, tried to dress up like normal guys, go out and bash some windows out. Otherwise, the Orange Revolution back then was a bloodless situation. Although, we'll say that uh, Yushinka, his whole face is like, you know, scarred because they poisoned him. That's how much Putin hated that motherfucker, you know? Just, whew. So, true story. Scarred his whole face. Like I said, diabolical mind of KGB, CIA. Maybe it's the Georgians too, I don't know. This is Eurasian mind here. So the Eurasian mind's a little different. But what I'm talking about is you've got these guys from Georgian Ministry of Defense, Katuna Polare, Leila Cardavelli. And what the hell do they do? Katuna leaves and goes off to the USA. Layla, she just stops speaking to me. That's it. She's done. That, that's it. She, she, you don't even know. Then she shows up with a black eye in July, and I asked Facebook, what, did somebody beat her ass? Like, what is, what's happened with Layla Cardavelli? What, what, what is she they told her to keep me out of the project? What's happened here? Because they, you know, they do stuff like that around this part of the world. So, to keep uh, people in line in the government, you know? But apparently she's fine. She was there March 1st with the U.S. Ambassador and on Sputnik News and, and at the Parliamentary Library. And I didn't know anything about it, but I was at the NATO headquarters here filming on uh, the NATO SPS topic, the NATO headquarters office back on the ground a month or so ago. So what I can say is I'm waiting for Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week answer on press accreditation, and I'm waiting four days now, almost four days. But in another couple of hours, it'll be four full business days. But no answer. This is just how these people operate. Something happens with Dr. Tamar on the business deal. I made a couple of interviews with her. Very good interviews, by the way. Fantastic information. Information that in America would probably get you in trouble with the medical authorities because they don't want to, they don't want to tell the truth. They don't want you to know the truth. This is on the topic of in vitro... Uh, in vitro uh, fertilization and in vitro fertilization also involving the merit mother uh, surrogacy program so we do that and uh, I tell her because we're gonna meet on a Monday or Tuesday she calls her, her chats and says look I can't meet on a Monday or Tuesday we're gonna change that to Thursday okay fine we're gonna meet down the street here and it's gonna be at four o'clock okay fine so I get started I'm making movies it's on Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week I've got a cold or a flu and uh, couldn't go as much as I wanted to but uh, I went when Miriam uh, Monagadze, I just met her a couple of weeks ago over at uh, train station for Central Station Metro. She happened to be there and I walked up and gave her a kiss on the cheek and I introduced myself to her mother who happened to be there too. So she was on TV here last night, I believe. At least it looked like it was last night. It was I met her. She was kind of kind of dancing for a moment. But anyway, so I'm, I'm, uh, back to the topic of this Georgian Ministry of Defense. I'm, I'm, I'm at the Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week and I'm, I'm popularizing, I'm popularizing Georgians. Yeah. How about that? I'm doing what the Ministry of Defense of Georgia asked me to do on a project. Their lawyer, who is now in New York, that's Kutuna Polari. 
And what the fuck? I'm waiting some more days here to get an answer on a press accreditation. How about that shit? That's how fucking crazy these people are. Understand it? That's how they are. Not just crazy, but rude. Look, you see a people here that beat the shit out of each other in Parliament. They beat the shit out of each other on TV. I go to a cafe, I'm looking up, and there's the monitor. If it's the news, they're beating each other. This is Georgia. And you got an ambassador that puts in a strategic communication program, announces it, puts it on the news, speaks about it, gets on their news, talks about media pluralism. I don't get any notice. I don't get nothing. And I didn't get a salary or a compensation for the help that I gave to the project, volunteer service. Even though initially they promised that they talked about it would be a big deal, they'd have offices here, offices in Switzerland, all that kind of shit. But these people, they love American money, they love military, and they're taking all they can get. They take and take and take, that's what they, that's what they do, man, they love it. But when it comes to uh, respect to an American citizen, when it comes to respect to an American journalist, the people that give the worst disrespect on earth are right here, and that's Leila Cardvelli, because I spent more than enough for a rental car and for flights to get back on time to Whiteman's Air Force Base to do the Wings Over Whiteman Air Show and got some amazing photos of the Warthog, the A-10 that Alexander Cardvelli uh, created, designed, and developed one of the most important close combat air uh, support jet fighters in the history of, of the world, of U.S. military aviation and NATO. So that's what's happened here. So no answer, no one like, no share from Leila Cardvelli of the Warthog photos. Can you imagine that shit? So I really think they want trouble. I think the Georgians not only want trouble, They've invited disrespect, and it, I can only understand that they want provocations. This is a provocation, and I, all my friends back home agree that this is a provocation. And this, they get so angry and say that all hell should be, they hoped all, one said all hell should be unleashed on the Georgians. This is how they do us, that I'm still waiting for an answer. And as far as the U.S. Embassy, if they didn't have a fucking problem, I don't think Ian Kelly would be suddenly leaving to go teach in Chicago. But they have a problem, and I wrote about that. So they really, really, really need to get their shit together here, because if you're going to continue to disrespect our citizens, or even just little me, then you're going to get a pushback. And that pushback may not be something that's pleasant for society. And remember that it was one of my ideas to do this project from the beginning. And when society begins to disrespect like this and abuse basic human rights, which that happened, and that's another story, I won't get into that right now, then you're going to find that instead of making friends, you're going to make enemies. And I believe that's what's happening here right now. And I think probably that's apparently what members of this government may want or elements of the U.S. government. Who knows? Anyway, have a nice day, friends. I think I've explained it pretty thoroughly.